What's going on guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at progress bars for TDK Bootstrap, Kinter, and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at progress bars for TTK Bootstrap, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, I'll shoot that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses on my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at progress bars, and they're very similar to the floodgate we looked at a few videos ago. I'll put a link up there somewhere. And you can see we've got this progress bar. I've got it set to striped. You could also set it to solid. And we've got it sort of the green color. And we can increment a few things at a time. We can stop. We can do auto every second. Boom, boom. I've got it moving 20. And that's kind of cool. We can just go automatically, zoop like that. And keeps going and going. All kinds of cool things you could do with this. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this TTK Bootstrap series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got some basic starter code. I'm calling it pb.py, short for progress bar, I guess. And uh, we're importing TTK Bootstrap as TB. I've pip installed that. And we're using this superhero theme. So it's that sort of dark theme. So, okay, let's just come down here and create a progress bar. I'm going to call it my progress. And this is going to be a tb.progress bar. And it's tb. Because up here we imported TTK Bootstrap as tb. So there we go. And now there's all kinds of different attributes you can use for this thing. We'll just sort of start walking through all of them here. We want to put this in root. We want to give this a boot style of, you know, anything you want. So let's say danger. That's the red color. You can use all your TTK bootstrap colors for this. So primary, secondary, info, success, danger, light, dark, all the rest of them. So we'll just do danger. That's that red one. And that's solid. You can do striped if you want just by passing in a striped. But for now, let's just do solid, see how that looks. Now, like I said, we can change all kinds of things here. So we can start out by setting the maximum length. So let's go maximum. And let me just put these all on separate lines so we can read them easier. And I just want to make this 100 if you wanted to make it 200. That's the maximum sort of number it can go to. So from 0 to 200, from 0 to 100, whatever. I'm just going to put 0 to 100. We can also change the mode. So just like the flood gauge thing we looked at a few videos ago, we can set the mode. Now the default is determinant. And the other option is indeterminate. We'll look at both of those. We'll set it to determinate for now. You don't have to put the mode on there. If you don't put the mode, it'll just be determinate by default. But we're going to play with it, so I'm going to put it on there. And let's see, what else do we got? We can change the length of it, like how physically big it is. So I want to say length equals, let's say make it 200, nice and sort of long. Now, that's not to be confused with the maximum. So it might be a length of 200, like, you know, that big, versus a length of 100, versus a length of 50. So it's 200, but it still only goes to 100. It's just the, you know, the bar will be physically bigger, right? And we can set the value to start with. So if we want to set this to like 20 right out the box, we could do that. So let's go ahead and my underscore progress dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of like 40, really push it down the screen. Let's just save this and run it and see what we got here. So we head over to my terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run python pb.py. And when we do, we get this solid red bar. You can see it's 20 because we set the value to 20. So it's already got 20 on there. And you can see it's, you know, yay length. So that's kind of cool. We can make it bigger. We can make it smaller. So that's cool. So let's go back here very quickly and let's just change this just so you see to 300 and let's set the value to zero by default Run this guy again. See now it's much longer. The length of it is an additional 100. So that just makes it bigger. So, okay. Now, what can we do with this thing? So let's create some buttons. So first I'm going to create a frame real quick to put these buttons in. So let's call this minor score frame. This is going to be a TB dot frame. And we want to just put it in root. And then let's minor score frame dot pack this guy. Give him a pad Y of like 20, push it down the screen a little bit. So let's say frame and let's say progress <laughs> bar. And then let's come down here and create some buttons. So I'm going to call this my underscore button. This is going to be a TB dot button. We want to put it in my underscore frame. 
And let's have the text say increment 20. And let's give this a boot style of, I don't know, info, make it blue or something. <laughs> I don't know. And let's also give this a command of uh, increment. So let me copy this. We'll need to create this function in a second. And for now, let's my underscore button dot grid this guy. So we'll grid this in the frame and we'll give it a column of zero and a row of zero. And for good measure, let's give this a pad X of 10 to space it apart from the other buttons we're about to create. So let's come up here and let's create this function. Let's say increment 20. And so I'm going to define increment. Now let's say we want to increment this by 20. Now there's a couple of different ways to do it. And I'm going to suggest an alternate way than the sort of standard way you might think. So the standard way is just to call my progress dot step and then say how much you want to increment it. So we could just do that. This doesn't work great though, as we'll see here. So let's come back over here. Let's run this guy. So our button is blue. If we click this, boom, it goes up 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Oh, it goes back to zero. It doesn't stay at 100 when you use step. And to me, that's kind of annoying. When it gets to the end, I want it to stay filled out at the end so I can see it's done, right? It's just sort of in my mind that should be the way it works. It shouldn't just go back to zero. It's very unsatisfying, right? You get to 80 and then instead of boom, all the way closing, it just disappears. So I don't love this. So I tend to not use the step method here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. What you can do is call the value. So let's go my underscore progress and then pass in the value attribute. And then we could just plus equal 20. So it takes whatever the value is currently starts out at zero and it adds 20 to that. So if we save that, come back over here, run this guy. Now, every time we click this, it's just going to add 20, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. It gets to the end. It's all filled out. It looks great. I like it to be filled out at the end like that. That just makes sense to me. Doesn't it make sense to you? It should be filled out at the end. So I tend to use this method. Now, uh, it's pretty cool and it's pretty easy. Now, let's create a quick label down here so that we can get the current value. So let's come down here and let's just uh, create a label. And I'm going to call this my underscore label. And this is going to be a tb.label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing to begin with. And uh, we'll just leave the boot style off for now because we don't really care what it looks like. And let's dot pack this guy, give him a pad y of 20 to push down the screen a little bit. So now if we want to output what the current value of our progress bar is, how could we do that? Well, we come up here and let's just get current value. So that's going to be my underscore label dot config. And we want to set the text equal to whatever our current my progress bar is. And we just pass in that same value attribute, right? So every time we click the button, it will increase it by 20 and then output that onto the screen. So if we save this and run it, then we get boom, it says 20 down there, 40, 60, 80, 100. Very cool. Now I can barely read that. So we're going to make this a little bigger just for fun. <laughs> let's come down here and let's give this guy a font equal to like Helvetica and size 18. So, okay, that's cool. So that's just increasing it, you know, by a certain amount, right? So we've set it to 20. We can set this to any number we want, 10, 5, 1, 0. Well, not 0, but you get the idea. So very cool. And very quickly, let's change this to 120. So the maximum is 120 just to sort of differentiate this and the length, right? So if we run this real quick, we're just going to see, of course, the, the length of it's the same, but now it goes 20, 40, 60, 80. 100, 120, right? So the maximum has changed. So I just wanted to point that out in case there's any confusion there. I'm going to change this back to 100. So, all right, what else can we do? Well, we can have this thing automatically start and just go. Uh, before we do that, though, let's look at this determinant thing, right? So if you want to do indeterminate, what this will do is, well, one, it'll change the, the shape of it. And let's change this from danger to danger striped just for fun. It'll change the shape of the progress bar, how it's filled. It'll just make a little line, but it'll also continue. So once you get to 100, it'll then go back down again. So indeterminate means it goes up and down, which you may want for certain things. So if we run this, we could see that. Right off the bat, you can see it's different because it starts out with something. 
and then 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, click it again, boom, goes down to 120, 140, 160, 180. It just keeps adding, right? Because we're adding in our function. If you wanted to have it hit 100 and then go back down to zero, you could do some logic to do that. Um, I don't think we're gonna do that. That's basic logic. You would do that in here once you just run an if statement. If value equals 100, then you know, instead of this plus equal 20, it would be minus equal 20, right? So you could do that, but you get the idea. So, okay, that's determinant, kind of weird. I don't use it all that much, but there are certain circumstances you may need to use it. So what else can we do? Well, let's have a button where we can click it and it just goes, right? It just kind of like starts at zero, one, two, three, nine, 10, 11, all the way up to a hundred very quickly. So let's come down here. I'm gonna create this. I'm gonna grab this button and let's go, eh, Let's grab a couple of these. So I'm gonna go my button one, one, two, two, three, three. We'll set this one to say auto. And let me take this command off for now. This one will be stop. And this one will be start. And again, let me take this command off. And for start, let's create a command called start and we'll create this function in just a second. We also need to change these columns. So this would be column one, column two, and column three. So, okay, let's come up here and let's create just start. So let's define our start function. And here we could call our progress bar, so my progress, and then we could just say dot start. And then we can pass in the increments that we want it to move. So let's say 10, right? So if I save this and run it, and I click start, it goes all the way up, and then we're still an indeterminate, so it just will keep going back and forth, right? So if we close this, let's change this back to determinate. Save this and run it. Now when we click start, it just goes zoop, and it just, it keeps going. Now you could set some logic in here that says, hey, if it ever hits 100, stop. But uh, I'll leave that to you. How do we get it to stop if we want to? We've got this stop button, it doesn't do anything. Well, let's look at that right now. So let's come down here to our start button or to our stop button. And let's give this a command of stop. We come up here, let's create a stop function. So we define stop. And to stop this guy, we just call my underscore progress dot stop. Pretty simple. So if we save this and run it, we can start it and boom, stop. It just goes back to zero, start, stop. Same thing here, we can increment 24 to 60, 80, we click stop, boom, it goes back to zero. Now this doesn't update after that because our stop function doesn't have that on there, but you could put that in there if you wanted. I suppose you could just grab this and I'll put it right there. So very cool and uh, pretty easy. Now, what if you wanted to auto increment at a certain interval based on a certain time? Well, we could do that. Let's come up here to this auto button and let's create a command called auto. And to do this, we're gonna use the Python time library. So let's import time, it just comes with Python. We don't have to install it or anything. We could just import it. And let's come down here and let's auto. So define auto and I'm gonna create a for loop. So let's go four X in a range of say five. So we want to do 20 increment blocks. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. There's five of those in 100, right? So we're gonna loop through five times, right? So we can just uh, grab this guy right here and paste him in. So that will do that. And we also probably want to output our current value. So we'll do that. And then we can time dot sleep and we want this to happen every second. Now, if we run this, this isn't actually gonna work. Uh, let's see if we run this. So if we click auto, it just sort of the whole program freezes until it finishes. So in five seconds, boom, there it goes. Now that's not what you want at all. We want it, we wanna see the progress as it goes, right? So to do that, we have to call something, I don't know if I've talked about this, definitely not on this channel, we can call, root dot update underscore idle tasks. And this is just a function that will do what it says. It will update the idle tasks. So instead of waiting till the thing is completely done, it'll do them one at a time. So 
we could say uh, update one at a time, not all at once or something like that. And here we could say uh, increment one second time, <laughs> whatever. So now if we save this and come back over here, it'll go one, two, three, four, five. You know, every second, boom, it will do that. So that's kind of cool. I like that. When we stop, it still does that. Here we can, ah, ah, still does it like that. And this starts over as well. Just keeps going as you click it. You're gonna wanna put some logic in there that stops it at 100. I'll leave that to you, that's trivial. So very cool, very easy to use. Not a whole lot of options here. You set the maximum, you set the length, you set the current value. You can get this value anytime you want just by calling value like this. And uh, you can assign things to that value just by using a assignment operator like any old Python. And you can set this mode to determinate versus indeterminate, whatever floats your boat. And uh, very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. And while you're there, think about getting membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses on my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Alder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.